8. Cabway Dubbed the world's most toxic town by some experts, nearly a century of lead mining and smelting has left the Zambian city of Cabway with a debilitating pollution problem. Located 62 miles north of the country's capital, Lusaka, Cabway was home to a major lead mine and smelter from 1904 to 1994. Today, the city's homes, schools, roads, and public areas remain highly contaminated. As of 2017, the full impact of the pollution had not yet been determined. Lead poisoning is, reportedly, a sensitive topic in Cabway, so many people with knowledge on the issue are reluctant to speak to the media, and official data is inaccessible to the public. But experts have found that the levels of lead in children's blood are 5 to 10 times higher than the maximum safe limit set by the US Environmental Protection Agency. It's believed that as many as 200,000 people living in Cabway have elevated blood lead levels. Speaking with The Guardian, environmental health expert Jack Caravanos described the amount of lead pollution in the city as unprecedented, even in comparison to the 20 other toxic hotspots he's visited throughout the world. He said that the number of people affected is definitely in the thousands, rather than hundreds like he'd seen elsewhere. Children are the most susceptible to lead poisoning because they spend time outside playing and are more prone to putting their hands in their mouths than adults. And because lead is a neurotoxin, the effects of poisoning on a developing mind can be detrimental. In addition to brain damage, the physical consequences can include blindness, paralysis, and other debilitating conditions, and can ultimately be deadly. And once the damage is done, the effects of lead poisoning cannot be reversed, according to Caravanos. Cleanup efforts are ongoing, but it'll be years before Cabway is truly a safe city to live in. 7. The Polygon The Soviet Union was responsible for causing a lot of radioactive pollution that persists in its territories to this day. Included among these sites is a 7,150-square-mile expanse of land in Kazakhstan known as the Polygon. From 1949 to 1963, dozens of above-ground nuclear tests occurred here, while underground tests continued until 1989. Health experts estimate that as many as one and a half million people have been exposed to nuclear fallout as a result of these tests, in addition to being subjected to acute bursts of radiation. The region's residents have been exposed to low doses of it over time. They've been dealing with it for decades now. To learn more about the effects of the prolonged radioactive poisoning, researchers have kept tabs on people living in and near the polygon, as well as their children and grandchildren. Their findings have revealed elevated cancer risks and have also suggested that the cardiovascular effects of radiation can be passed down from one generation to the next. The fallout appears to spread mostly through high winds, which distribute the hazardous material in all different directions. In addition to cancer and cardiovascular problems, residents blame the fallout for other health problems. And while experts haven't been able to definitively link these other problems directly to the radioactive pollution, they also haven't ruled out the possible connections. For now, they continue to investigate in hopes of finding more definitive answers. Any future findings could influence ongoing debates about whether or not it's a good idea to reduce carbon emissions by expanding nuclear technology. 6. Alang Ship Breaking Yard The world's longest ship breaking yard occupies a nearly 9-mile stretch of India's western coastline in the state of Gujarat. Known as the Alang Sosia Ship Breaking Yard, it consists of 183 ship breaking yards, where retired super tankers, car ferries, container ships, ocean liners, and other large vessels are dismantled. Since its opening in 1983, the facility has amassed an estimated $110 billion in value, including assets. But these profits have reportedly come at a cost to the environment. According to experts who've described the site as an environmental ticking time bomb, the activities that go on at Alang Sosia pollute the surrounding beach and waters with heavy metals. India's loose marine environmental protection policies have allowed the country's coastline to become a dumping ground for hazardous materials, leading to irreversible damage. The pollution has destroyed several coral reefs and has permanently impacted the region's wildlife. 
It also endangers Alang's 15,000 workers, who are routinely exposed to carcinogens and other toxic substances, including asbestos, mercury, lead, and radioactive waste. Pollution also comes from the emissions of nearby mills, where recycled steel is being reworked. In 2019, the Alang Hospital opened, giving those in need of medical care a place to go nearby. But when it comes to long-term meaningful changes, like stricter legal regulations and better protection for workers, the future appears bleak for the time being. What do you think the future holds for the Alang Saucia ship breaking yard? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. Norilsk Located 200 miles above the Arctic Circle in Siberia, the closed city of Norilsk was founded in 1935 as a gulag labor camp. Today, it's the world's northernmost city, with a population above 180,000, and the second largest city within the Arctic Circle, and its population has grown steadily in recent years. Norilsk sits atop some of the world's largest nickel deposits. For the majority of its existence, it's been a center for mining and smelting nickel, copper, cobalt, platinum, palladium, and coal. Today, the city is home to the world's largest heavy metal smelting complex. Along with this industrial activity comes heavy pollution. The area surrounding the complex was once surrounded by a boreal forest. Today, the land is barren, with not a single tree existing within miles of the site. Every year, more than 4 million tons of cadmium, copper, lead, nickel, arsenic, selenium, and zinc are released into the air. Not surprisingly, Norilsk carries a much higher than average rate of death from respiratory diseases. Hazardous waste also makes its way into the area's waterways, with some local rivers becoming so polluted that they've turned red. As of 2021, there was no sign of metal mining and smelting slowing down in Norilsk. On the contrary, production was slated to ramp up amid an increased demand for the metals needed for electric car batteries. And while Russian President Vladimir Putin maintains that this type of development can be accomplished sustainably, Russia's track record for pollution management suggests otherwise. 4. Ramsar Unlike most of the cities on today's list, the Iranian city of Ramsar does not have human activity to blame for its radioactive contamination. Located along the Caspian Sea, it contains the world's highest measured natural background levels of radiation. In certain areas, the doses far exceed the maximum recommended levels for radiation workers. According to scientists, Ramsar's excessively high radiation levels are caused by the local geology. The groundwater boasts a higher than average concentration of uranium, making it naturally radioactive. From the ground, the water makes its way into nearby hot springs which local residents and tourists eagerly bathe in without second thought about whether it's safe. Scientists have pondered whether it would be smart to relocate Ramsar's residents to an area with less radiation pollution. One study by a group of researchers from the University of Rochester and the Rafsanjan School of Medical Sciences in Iran ruled in favor of the idea. In a report of their findings, the team wrote that natural radiation has existed since the beginning of life itself. So, in one sense, it's nothing new for humans and animals and plants to be exposed to it. But the team found a correlation between the abnormally high radiation levels in Ramsar and the rate of cancer among locals, leading to some troubling concerns about whether it's a safe place for people to live. For now, the city remains inhabited and life continues as usual. The future of Ramsar and whether its people will eventually have to move remains to be seen. 3. Zabul in 2016, the World Health Organization listed the eastern Iranian city of Zabul as one of the world's most contaminated in terms of air pollution. Located near the border with Afghanistan, Zabul's roots date back at least 5,000 years. But what was once home to a thriving ancient civilization is now plagued by poverty, neglect, and pollution. As temperatures reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit and higher every summer, the region experiences an annual period of unforgiving dust storms known as 120 Days of Wind. The disappearance of a nearby wetland called Hamun in recent years due to climate change has made these conditions even more relentless and potentially deadly. According to the WHO, 
Zabul's air has the world's highest concentration of fine particulate matter, with a diameter of less than 2.5 microns. Simply put, it's home to the worst air pollution of its kind, putting the health of its 137,700 residents increasingly in danger as climate change continues to accelerate the severity of the dust storms. It's much different from the industrial pollution that plagues some of the most contaminated cities, but is nevertheless just as hazardous. Every year, more than 500 of Zabul's residents are diagnosed with tuberculosis from the dust storms, and more than 300 of the region's former villages have cleared out since the disappearance of the Hamoud wetland. 2. Linfen Located in China's Shaanxi province and home to around 4 million residents, the city of Linfen first made worldwide headlines in 2006 when the American Blacksmith Institute listed it as one of the world's 10 most polluted cities. But this wasn't always the case. Until 1978, Linfen was known for its spring water, greenery, and rich agriculture, earning it the nickname of the Modern Fruit and Flower Town. But the landscape changed in the ensuing decades as the city became an industrial coal mining center. While some improvements have been made in recent years, Linfen continues to rank as one of China's most polluted cities. Today, it's home to a large number of coal mines, plants, and iron and steel mills. Media reports describe a thick cloak of smog that hangs over the metropolis, which is allegedly often strong enough to make visitors' eyes hurt and to cause nausea and dizziness. In 2009, a local farmer told CNN that when his sheep eat grass near the factory adjacent to his property, their babies are born deformed. By then, Chinese authorities were claiming that Linfen was no longer one of the world's most polluted cities and that it had become habitable, but this finding was debatable. Efforts to curb the pollution have shown little progress, according to a 2019 Reuters report. Although hundreds of Linfen's industrial sites have been shut down, the air remains filled with small hazardous particles. That year, China's environmental ministry ranked Linfen as the worst performer among 168 of the country's cities that it monitors. The city had failed to reach its goal of reducing the concentration of hazardous particles by 4.5%, which meant that the only thing to do was make even more changes in an effort to cut pollution. This is easier said than done, especially since Linfen's economy relies heavily on its mining industry. When facilities began to close in 2007 in a bid to make the air cleaner, the city lost an estimated $300 million in revenue. In the years since, the economy has struggled to recover. Meanwhile, pollution remains a problem. There are no easy answers for how to tackle both problems. During the winter months, manufacturers are ordered to reduce output by at least 30%, and in some cases are even required to shut down, depending on emission levels at any given time. When it became clear in 2019 that Linfen was failing to meet its goals for reducing pollution, the city implemented its winter time standards during other times of the year. As of 2021, Linfen's air quality had achieved a moderate ranking. To give you an idea, it's improved significantly and could be much worse, but masks, air purifiers, and limiting outdoor exercise are still recommended. 1. Ozersk There are many highly radioactive sites in Russia and elsewhere throughout the former Soviet Union. Included among them is a small city in the Ural Mountains, surrounded by barbed wire fences, gates, and guards. Today, it's known as Ozyorsk or Ozask, but for a long time, its existence was a complete secret. Codenamed Chelyabinsk 40, or City 40, it didn't appear on any maps, and its 100,000 residents were conveniently absent from the census. Built by Gulag prisoners in 1947, Ozask was the birthplace of the post-World War II Soviet nuclear weapons program. The city provided housing for the employees of the nearby Mayak nuclear plant. When people move there, they simply vanish from mainstream society without explanation. Workers were contracted to live and work at Ozersk for eight years, during which time their contact with the outside world was minimal. For the residents of Ozersk, life was good in many ways. Like residents of other closed cities, they enjoyed much nicer housing, education, healthcare, food, 
and access to goods than most people on the outside. Even today, the city boasts a higher than average material quality of life. But this upgraded existence has a dark side. Ozersk is one of the world's most contaminated cities, and residents have suffered from radiation-related health problems and even died from the pollution. The Russian government kept silent about these dangers for decades as the Mayak plant dumped nuclear waste into nearby bodies of water. And while the dumping has stopped, the pollution lingers. Residents are free to move out, but most choose to stay despite the risks due to the nicer living conditions that are afforded to them. Outsiders are allowed to visit with special permission from the Russian secret police, but are kept under strict tabs during their stay. Thanks for watching. If you were offered half a million dollars to stay a week in one of these places, would you do it? Tell us in the comments below and remember to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.